Copying files remotely over SSH with SCP and rsync. SSH, as you probably already know, it's a protocol used for remotely connecting to servers. Note that this tutorial is not about SSH basics, but rather about copying files to remote machines over SSH protocol. Yes, SSH can be used not only to connect to remote machines, but also to copy files to or from remote machines. There are two most commonly used commands for copying files with SSH, SCP and rsync. First, let's take a look at the SCP command. The SCP command relies on SSH for data transfer, so it requires an SSH key or password to authenticate on the remote systems. Throughout the video, I'll show you how to copy over SSH using a password or with a key. For this, I have created two servers on AWS. One supports SSH key authentication only. That's a default, default behavior on AWS EC2 servers. And the second one, I have changed OpenSSH server settings to allow password authentication. This way I can show you both ways how to do it with keys and with a password. Now let's take a look at the SCP command syntax. First, we'll look into how to copy a local file to a remote machine. Here I have prepared a folder with two files. So to copy a local file, SCP and then you provide the location of the local file. In my case, it's configs, app.py, and the remote machine. So first you need to specify the username of the remote machine. I want to copy it. So the username on my machine is going to be CTUser. Add, after this you specify the IP address or host name of the remote machine. I'll grab this from the AWS console because this is an AWS server. First, I'll copy to the machine that accepts passwords. I'll copy this public IP, enter it here, and colon. After the colon, you specify where exactly do you want to copy on the remote machine. I want to copy to your home folder on the remote machine. So this is going to be a home folder of the EC2 user. So press enter and I provide the password and that's it. The file has been transferred. I can quickly verify it by SSH into the machine. LS and there you go. Now let me also show you how to copy with a key if the remote machine requires key authentication. The command overall is going to be similar but just with additional option. Let me change here to an IP address of the machine that requires key authentication. Here we go. Paste in here. So if I just copy like this, I'll get permission denied because I need to provide the key. So you just need to add one more option, hyphen I, and then specify the location of the key. In my case, it's located under home folder, inside data search folder. Inside it, there is a file called imac.pem. That's my private key. Enter. And there you go. I have copied over the file successfully. To copy a directory from a local system to a remote system, you need to use a hyphen R option. That stands for recursive copy. Let's try to copy this configs folder to the remote machine. The syntax is going to be also similar, scp-r configs. This is the location of my folder and I want to copy this folder to a remote machine, ec to user add. Let's copy the IP address of the machine with a password, enter here. And where do I want to copy it? I want to copy it just to a home folder. Press enter. Red. Enter the password. So now let me verify that it has actually been copied. And if I do ls, here is the folder which contains all of the files that I have copied over. 
And if you want to do this with a key, it's the same thing. You just add an additional option with hyphen i and the location of your key. So if you want to do the other way around, if you want to copy a remote file to a local machine, you're just going to switch the places. Let me show you. Let's say I want to copy from a remote machine. First, I specify here the remote machine, which is EC2 user at, let's copy over the IP address of the remote machine. What file on the remote machine? And let's say I want to copy from the home folder FPY file. This is on the remote machine. And let's say I want to copy this to the slash TMP folder on my local machine. So here's the location of my local folder. And just press enter. It asks for a password. And that's it. I have copied over. I can verify by listing contents of the TMP folder. And this is a file I have copied over. And with the key, it's going to be the same thing. You just provide the hyphen I option. And some notes to mention. To be able to copy files, you must have at least read permissions on the source file and write permissions on the target system files. Be careful when copying files that share the same name and location on both systems because SCP will overwrite files without a warning. If SSH on the remote host is listing on a port other than the default 22, then you can specify the port using the dash capital P argument. Use lowercase hyphen p option if you want the original file permissions and access modification times to be preserved on the destination. Now let's take a look at the rsync command. rsync is a quite powerful tool. It's more advanced than SCP with many customizable options. Rsync can be used to copy files from local to local, basically copying files on the same machine from one, from one folder to another folder. It can be used to copy from local to remote machines, from remote to local. Example of copying files on the same machine is this. Dash A option, which is short for dash dash archive, is most common because this option tells Rsync to sync directories recursively preserve symbolic links, modification times, groups, ownership, and permissions. Note that omitting the file name from the destination location copies the file with the current name. If you want to save the file under a different name, you should specify the new name on the destination part. You could use rsync for synchronizing local directories. One of the example use cases is to create a local backup of the website files. Okay, so we talked about using rsync for local copies but we use it more often for remote file transfers. In the following exa example, we're transferring a directory from a local to a remote machine with a password authentication and with a key authentication. To transfer data from a remote to a local machine, use the remote location as a source. So basically, you just switch them with a password authentication and with an SSH key authentication. If SSH daemon on the remote host is listing on a port other than the default 22, you should specify the port using the dash E option and pass the SSH command with write options. Here is a with a password authentication and here is with SSH authentication. When transferring large amounts of data, it's recommended to run the rsync command with a capital dash P option. With capital P option, rsync will keep partially transferred files so you can resume the rsync copy later if the transfer gets interrupted by a network problem or any other reason. Another common option used is dash z, short for dash dash compress, and it's used to compress data while it's being transferred over the network because transfer data size is reduced, which helps in slow network conditions. Note that data will be decompressed after the transfer so you will have files in their original size at the destination location. Now, when should we use SCP and when should we use rsync for remote file transfers over SSH? rsync is considered to be faster than SCP as it provides fast incremental file transfer by transferring only the differences between the source and the destination. In other words, it, it won't copy the data that's already in the destination. 
Our sync is commonly used for mirroring data, incremental backups, copying files between systems. So to summarize, you should probably use SCP for simple one-time tasks, or if you are transferring just a few files, because SCP is simpler to use. For recurring tasks like cron jobs, or if you are transferring a large amount of files, use rsync. rsync is better optimized for file transfers, and you can also customize it with different options. Thank you so much for watching this, and I hope it was useful.